Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the closest distance and velocity. Now let's go ahead and examine what we're dealing with here with regards to the closest distance. If you're given a point AB and a line, what is the shortest distance that is between the point and the line? Now I have a situation here where I have this particular point which is Q and this particular black line and if I go ahead and find the vector form of that black line it is just going to be equal to 0, 2 which is the position vector plus t times it by the directional vector which is going to be 2, 1. So this is the vector equation of the line there's my point how do we go ahead and establish or calculate the shortest distance between the point and the line? Now with vector methods it's actually quite simple what we need to do is we need to go ahead and establish the fact that if we know that this vector over here, which is a vector from Q to any point on the line, and let's call that point R, notice that it's x, y, but on the line, then this vector needs to be perpendicular to the directional vector of that particular line. And if that's true, then I know that the scalar product is zero, and then I can actually go ahead and find what I'm looking for. So let's take a look at what this means. Let's go ahead and say then that I'm looking for QR, and QR is actually just going to be those two points minus, well, in order to find the vector that represents QR, it is going to be this XY minus 2, 1, which is described there. But then the XY is actually going to be any point that is on the line. Well, any point on the line is going to be described by this vector equation which is going to be 0 plus 2t, 0 plus 2t, and 2 plus t, 2 plus t, minus 2, 1. So if I simplify that, then the vector qr is always going to have the representation of 2t minus 2 and 1 plus t. Now that vector, of course, is going to change. That vector can be whatever we want it to be, depending upon the value of t that we have. But we're looking for a particular value of t because we want to make sure that we force this vector to be perpendicular to the directional vector of the line. And if that's the case, then we know that we're going to set the scalar product to be equal to zero. So notice that what I have here is that qr, which is 2t minus t, 2t minus 2, 1 plus t, I'm going to dot that with the directional vector of the line, which is 2, 1. I do the scalar product and I come up with t is equal to 3 fifths. Now what does that t equals 3 fifths actually give you? If I was to substitute the value of 3 fifths here and I solve for r, I'm going to come up with a point on the line which is going to be, and if I draw that vector, it, that vector is going to be perpendicular to the directional vector of the line. So that then means that if I can go ahead and find the magnitude of that particular va vector, qr, when t is equal to 3 fifths, I've answered my question. So to find the shortest distance, we must find the magnitude of the vector qr when t is equal to 3 fifths. Well, we know what qr is here. We substitute the 3 fifths there. We find its magnitude, and we found our answer. So that's the way that we can go ahead and use vectors and the scalar product to go ahead and determine the shortest distance between a line and a point. Now, what we want to also do is we want to go ahead and take a look at velocity, because velocity is going to come across with this particular example as well, in the sense that we could look at this r equals 0 to 0 to plus t times it by 2, 1 as the motion of an object, let's just say for example a boat. And if that's the case, then we know that this boat is going to be moving in that direction, and if we know that it's going to describe the motion of that object with t greater than or equal to 0, then the velocity of the object must be described by the directional vector because that's telling you which direction it's moving in and for each particular unit of t, this is how far it needs to go therefore you're dealing with the velocity vector. So what we can do then is we can say this then therefore if v is going to be the velocity vector it's going to be equal to a b and that velocity vector is describing the velocity of a moving object then it is also traveling at a speed of the absolute value of the, uh, sorry, the magnitude of the v-vector. Okay, so there you go. We now go, can take a look at the closest distance 
and establish what the closest distance is using vector methods by using this idea here of the vector that from the point to the line dot product with the directional vector of the line itself has to be equal to zero. We can then go ahead and calculate very simply what the shortest distance between the point and the line is. And then we can also go ahead and take a look at that line as a description of the motion of an object. Okay, so we'll do some problems in class to take a look at how all of this fits together, work out any kinks, and hopefully we'll be able to work on these closest distance problems as well as velocity problems with a high degree of accuracy and precision. Okay, so we'll see you in class. See you next time. Bye-bye.